are you ready to hang with your digital besties? What Day Is It? is a podcast covering every girl problem, life struggle, and biz reality out there. So pour yourself a glass of wine and get ready to laugh, relate, and celebrate not having it all together. I think that was my biggest thing in 27, like 28 is I, cause I'm such a perfectionist and I'm like, I want to do this. I want to make sure that this is that. And like, I was never feeling fulfilled because I always put that expectation on myself. But the second that I let that go or like realize that there is no perfect or that there is like, I hate the word balance. And that happened at 27 because I realized there's no such thing. We put so much pressure on ourselves to have balance. When we let go of that, we actually achieve more balance. Welcome back to What Day Is It Podcast, your favorite digital version of Happy Hour. What? <laughs> you really just sprung that on me and I, I couldn't. Know. I, I feel don't... like we're getting a little monotonous. You got to spice it up to keep the relationship going and alive. I just have no tune or sense of. And you think I had tune right there? Well, no. I think I think rhythm and tune go hand in hand. Mm-mm. Or like the ability to make up a, a a little song on the spot. A little ditty. Yeah, a little a little blurb, a little, a little something something. And I don't have those abilities. I can't dance, and I have no rhythm, and I cannot sing, and I cannot come up with songs on the spot. Like my brain just doesn't go there. Well, you know what? I just wanted to give our friendships the variety of no, the spice of life, the variety of sure. life. Hi, I'm the Jackie Rye. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> and I'm the influencer lead for Play Digital, one half of this dysfunctional podcast. Dog mom to Harvey, stepmom to Banks. His Mother-in-law. Ne- Otherwise, they're siblings, and that's just weird. Oh, wait, that means we're together. But I mean, <laughs> like, kind of. <laughs> no, you're her mother-in-law, and I'm his mother-in-law. Are you... Sh- wait, or aunt? No, because... Otherwise, it's incest what they do to each other. Well, no. You all have... Everyone has that cousin that's not actually their cousin that's like their cousin. (laughs) You know? Don't you? Yeah. (laughs) But it's still weird. Okay. (laughs) Anyways, I'm Bailey Stanworth, the founder of Play Digital and State of Grace and the other half of what you already know is Dysfunction Junction, the podcast. I I don't know. It's weird. Like, I, I haven't... We haven't podcasted a full... That's not true. I take it back. (laughs) But friendships, guess what? We're here to give you zero financial advice today. Yeah, our podcast was supposed to come out, but unfortunately my, well, our accountant was sick. So that one is still coming out. We just haven't recorded it yet. Sucks because I really needed that podcast. (laughs) Honestly, me too. It's a very (laughs) self-serving podcast. So she better hurry up and get better because I need help. Says the queen of sickness. Okay. Well, also let's just dive right in but jackie and i literally today hugged each other when we saw each other because we hadn't seen each other and say each other one more time bailey <laughs> in two weeks yeah the dogs were so happy to be reunited and i was like oh my god hi reunited and it <laughs> feels so good i think i said i actually missed you which is so rude and like a jab within <laughs> it but like <laughs> i see bailey so much and we spend a lot of time together so it's like, hard to miss each other yeah two Abs- weeks apart was just weird. absence makes the heart grow fonder we had so much to catch up on. i'm just like a bunch of quotes today if you <laughs> love would- something let it go if what it are returns called? it was always yours what are those called i'm just gonna talk in pinterest quotes today no they're not pin- there's a specific name for them and they're like the live laugh love signs there's a, a quote. name no there's a name there's it's a corny name about what they are and what a it- corny name mottos mantras no no we'll never know huh until we google it later <laughs> interesting but anyways friendships bailey went to nashville she left me abandoned me didn't invite me on the trip kidding um okay <laughs> as you guys know if you listen to last week's episode i just chose not to go for my finances probably the best thing i could have done honestly for it was a very good choice <laughs> do you have did you spend a lot of money well, obviously yeah okay well honestly you can afford it so i just couldn't at this point it just it's easy once you're somewhere to spend money oh, so yeah. like if you're saving it and you're like i'm gonna go on a trip and i'm gonna save our accountant would be very proud of you and your life choices. Yep. 
wish not of me. Would. Except We're, mine, I can make it business I wish expensive. You, I wish she was here today to make me feel better. But anyways, so Bailey went to Nashville. And if you didn't listen to last week's episode, what the heck are you doing? Stop this podcast right now and go listen. Um, I lectured her before she left about wearing a mask mm-hmm. to the airport because of the coronavirus, which is had a few cases and she kind of did get in my head a little bit like i really wasn't that concerned at first and then i started reading up on it a little bit more and i was like oh should i wear the mask i was like i'll feel it out at the airport um other bailey got me like one of the actual masks that work because i kept getting so many dms of people being like they don't work but it's not like a dental mask it's yeah. like the actual n m n95 that specific mask so we had them yes and i told bailey she better wear one and she was like no i'm not wearing one she made the joke she made the joke about how sars was around and she's still (laughs) kicking it anyways but i also so when i was on the plane i started to feel sick like (laughs) nauseous no like my throat was getting really sore but that's and not a that's not a thing of corona. Yeah, it is. is it's it? head cold. Like oh. it, it comes on like you get a fever, you get like a sore throat, you start coughing, you sneeze. And I started getting a really sore throat. And like, you know, when you're getting a cold and your nose feels really hot, I had that. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no, I'm going to die. I was like, this is it. I'm going to die in Nashville. I'm glad I got traveler's insurance because I'm going to end up um, quarantined in the hospital of Nashville. Wild but you didn't you're good no but back home back home across so, let me just walk you the through continent it. bailey leaves me she goes to nashville to live her best life and i'm stuck in vancouver working for the weekend i work i make money thank god because how sad would it have been if i made no money and i didn't come on the trip <laughs> and sunday night i well saturday so this is actually my cue i'm shoot should i just dive into my cue but psycho I guess we have to now. I have to. This is why it's dysfunctional, guys. My cute this week was that I did the super cute Galentine's photo shoot for Bloom, which is actually live now. So you can go look at it on their Instagram if I haven't already posted photos, which I probably will. So um, it was just like a super cute. We've had Bloom on before. I don't know what episode it was, but it was with Taryn and you guys should really go listen to that episode. But I went in a photo shoot with my sister as a best friend shoot and she was sick. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like, she is the biggest drama queen I've ever met in my entire life. So she told me she was sick and I just kind of shrugged it off. And I was like, okay, yeah, like you're always sick. And she was, she knows she's a drama queen. So she'll joke about it and she'll over, she'll play it up and blah, blah, blah. Her family has a bad immune system. Okay. All right then. (laughs) (laughs) And so I literally told my sister, you need to suck it up. Stop being a dramatic queen and just come to the shoot she's like i'm going to do it obviously but i don't want to and i just want you to know i don't feel well i'm like you oh my god do you ever feel well like there's always something wrong with you so then we go and do the shoot and we had the little sister day we hung out we ended up staying downtown had to pick up my mom from the airport that night um so we were driving home my mom and me are making fun of my sister for how sick she's claiming to be sunday morning i wake up with a little cold and i'm like damn it <laughs> and so i go to work and i have a pounding headache the entire night and i'm like what is wrong with me i was like it's not a caffeine headache because i've had two coffees i've taken advil it wouldn't go away this was the forewarning my body was like i'm coming and so then i woke up monday excuse me worked and me and maddie our intern for play came to bailey's house while she was away i did some stuff and let me tell you when i was packing orders here i was sweating i was so like frazzled and confused and i couldn't figure out why but i know why now so i go to sleep monday night and i wake up on tuesday with a full bone flu i barely sleep through the night i'm waking up hot cold flashes i wake up tuesday and I throw up. So I like fully have the flu. And if that's not karma, then <laughs> I don't know. What and I'm is. just in Nashville, thriving, <laughs> surviving, dancing. And so if you know me from last episode, you imagine I'm terrified I have coronavirus. <laughs> so I go to the doctor ASAP and he just gives me this flu medication that's supposed to stop flu symptoms. And thankfully it stopped me from throwing up. 
but I still had all the other symptoms of body aches, headaches, fever. Flu is um, the worst. You just end up being for down five, for the count. Like yeah, that's an days. excessive amount of time. Yeah. But that is what you call karma. And so I just sat in my bed and wallowed in my sadness for five days and watched a lot of TV and started The Handmaid's Tale, which if so you good. haven't started that friendships, really get on that. It's such a good show. It's on Crave through Hulu. It's on Crave. Yeah. Crave is its own thing. But yeah, Crave and Hulu have it, I think. So anyways, that's my story of my sickness. I took like five days off of work and I'm better now. So that's good. What's your psycho? Oh, so last week when I was feeling better and my appetite was back, I was like, hmm, I really just want a Beyond Burger. Okay. So it's like nine o'clock at night. And I'm like, I just really, really want one. So I drive to A&W, which is probably like a 10, 15 minute drive from my house. But honestly, at this point, I had no choice. Like I hadn't eaten a proper meal. I mean, kudos to you. I would have skipped the dishes. So here's the kicker, though. OK, this is why it gets interesting. I just wanted Beyond Burger. There's no other place that I can get a Beyond Burger. So then I drive to A&W and I'm like, I just don't like A&W fries. Like I do they're not good. You can only get one size. I don't like them. They're not salty enough ever. And so I'm like, I'm just going to go to McDonald's and get fries. <laughs> so I went to A&W, spent like 10 minutes in the drive through getting a Beyond Burger with a lettuce wrap because I can't have gluten right now. And then um, go to McDonald's, keep my Beyond Burger all like wrapped up in the bag and save it to eat with my fries. And I get my French fries and that lineup took like 30 minutes because it was popping because I don't know what day it was, but on brand, but it was just a long line. And so it took me a total of 40 minutes to get a Beyond Burger and a French fries from, Honestly, it, from two separate places. You have more self-control than I do because I would have been sitting in that drive through eating the burger. <laughs> so then I get home and I didn't want Jordan to know I went to two different places. So <laughs> I ate my Beyond Burger in the car and left the garbage in my car. It's still in there. And then what walked an experience in. waits 30 minutes in a drive through just to eat solo in your driveway. And then I just walked in with my McDonald's French fries. Just like that's all I went to do for 45 <laughs> fucking minutes. <laughs> oh, I love me. <laughs> <laughs> it was so worth it though do you like a&w fries um i don't know that i've honestly ever had them because i what? usually i usually get onion rings are those vegan yeah it's an onion it's deep fried onion i guess but like what are they cut co- cold co- cold co- onion in batter yeah exactly what's the batter made out of Bread? egg egg no we're gonna google this i later. get deep, i mean it could be it totally could be but i get um like deep fried stuff from other places and there's usually not any egg in it it's like a flour like a i mean there could be but i don't think there we'll see we'll crack the case later there we go but i just don't like yeah i don't know don't like their fries so do what you gotta do highly recommend though i mean if you're gonna eat fries better eat the ones you like mcdonald's do you like mcdonald's french fries i mean who doesn't but i don't ever Jordan doesn't oh that's weird i do okay i don't like how skinny they are that's exactly what he said but i love that Uh, see i don't like that i like a thicker fry okay kfc actually i just had kfc fries for the first time in nashville yeah so fucking good why did you have kfc because <laughs> elena davies she had gotten they um went and brought kfc over to caitlin's house and they have beyond chicken there oh which my is, God. So is good. It good so good i tried like a little sampler of every single one and then i grabbed a fry for the full experience and i let me tell you those fries were so the, no, bomb i like kfc fries i don't really like beyond um burger king fries oh, I fucking hate burger king is a, yeah it's gross. as a whole establishment and i'm not i'm trying to think of the other fast food places but i think oh we should like have a we should have a, do a video on fries and rate them like an igtv on fries like a blind tasting blindfold tasting test yeah, and then we should like rank them so that like we're doing the valuable work for our friendship. So that if they want the best fries, they know where to go because we're here to report the questions and the answers that everybody wants to know. Let us know if you're up for that friendships because I'm sure as hell up for it. <laughs> we are sacrificing and volunteering ourselves I just, for the greater cause. I want French fries now. I'm hungry. I was you looking at the pink avo site earlier. I know. I know. 
Um, also, fun fact, I ruined my gluten freeism. Freeism? Make, making that term up. My, uh, what would the term be? You know, there's veganism. Uh, my, my wheatism. My wheat, anti-wheatism. My anti-wheatism. Um, you guys, I ruined it by accident, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I was, when I had the flu and I was delirious and foggy, Jordan bought me vegetable soup and it has little alphagettis in it. And I ate two bowls. And then on the third bowl, I was like, okay, I didn't eat two bowls in one sitting, just to clarify. <laughs> or three. I don't know. You just drove through <laughs> AW and McDonald's. So. <laughs> But I ate in the end of the week, I had eaten three bowls and I'm on my third bowl and I scoop out some alphagettis to put in my mouth and I look at them and I'm like, <gasps> I literally was like, <gasps> and I was on my phone just typing like a crazy madman, does alphagetti have wheat in it? <laughs> <laughs> and it did. And I was like, <gasps> but I still ate the rest yeah, of the bowl. Because I mean, you're, when you're sick too, it's hard because especially flu, you just don't have an appetite. So all, you gotta eat what you can eat. All I wanted was saltine crackers, like mm. premium plus. Those definitely are gluten free. No, they weren't. So I had to have glutino. Glutino. Crispy chia seed infused crackers. Something tells me it was not the same. No, it wasn't. They were still <laughs> good though. Oh man. Um, okay. Well, let me just see what uh, what list you got. What over I want to pull out of my list because I got a lot of psychos. Um, I will start with my cute. So while in Nashville. Um, it was fun because there was like 14 of us and... Sounds like a lot. It was a lot. I'm not going to lie. Imagine, just friendships, sit for a second. Imagine putting yourself in on a vacation with 14 other people. All in the same house. All needing Ubers. 24-7. Like, did you have to know every time you took an Uber with someone what ride it was for and like how you were going to divvy it up after? Did you generally stick with the same group? Um... Well, no. So we were lucky in the fact that Blair lives there and drove a lot. Oh, she doesn't really nice. drink. Yeah. So then we only had to do one Uber and split that throughout the house. And I just kind of like I kept track of mine and I ended up kind of by default being the one who was doing a lot of it. Which makes sense for one person. To yeah. Do I mean, there was obviously op- um, times where that didn't happen just because some people were doing their own thing. But yeah, it's it's been fun to do math after getting back. But I imagine. Anyways. Um. So yeah, there was like 14 of us girls and not everybody was from Vancouver. The majority were, but there was Sarah from Toronto. Um, she came and surprised everybody, which is also another cute, but it's more her cute. And then Elena from um, Texas came and flew in. There was Blair. Oh, she's from Texas. Yeah. And then Blair was there. Um, There's like some other friends from Nash who were there. There was another friend of Sarah's who we've met oh, through Sarah Sydney. She's so fucking funny. She's so funny. Um she was in from Atlanta. So it was just kind of like this really cool mix of friends coming together. And then on, so we went, the group went Thursday to very early Monday. I ended up staying a bit longer, but on Saturday, um, a bunch of us had gotten to talking and we were just kind of like reflecting on how cool it was that we all came together. And then I don't really know how it came up. Sarah brought it up, but she was like, I just wanted us all at some point to get friendship tattoos. And then me being the person I am, I'm like, let's go right now. So I called. And Were we just, you intoxicated? No. Oh. I mean, I had a drink, but this was at like one in the afternoon. Okay. I mean, still likely I could have been intoxicated, mm-hmm. but I wasn't. Um, so yeah, we went and me, Sarah, Elena, and Shaughnessy all got little friendships. So they're Cute. little ships that we all got like on the side of our wrist. And I text jackie i was like you have to get one like it's not just for the four of us it's really just cool that it can kind of evolve and like i think caitlin's gonna get one like anybody who is a friend can get one so and we actually already saw um a whole other group of friends do the same thing they went and got matching tattoos it was so cute a a friendship tattoo yeah it was a a different it was a different ship oh but yeah it was like a group and they tagged sarah in it it was so cute okay hate to be the bearer bad news here but i'm not gonna get one why <laughs> you're so offended okay to me just because i'm a type of person that only has two tattoos on- <laughs> i wish you guys could see bailey i only face. had three before this one i only have two tattoos on my body one is for my grandma and one is with my sister oh i my just hey you have another you have more than three there's no way you have oh. your one on your wrist 
You one on your middle finger. You have the one that you got in Nashville the other time. What is that? That's three. Oh, I thought you had more than nope, that. No, that's three. Okay. But this isn't your first friendship tattoo or matching tattoo with someone. So yes, it is. No, you got matching ones with the other people in Nashville. No, I didn't. I went with them too, but I, we didn't get matching tattoos. We just oh. were at the tattoo place oh, at the same I'm, time. I totally thought they and were And it says the girl who has a fucking matching tattoo. No, I don't. Well, it's not matching, but yeah. it's the same concept. Oh. Same place. <laughs> Wait. Like, I literally, no one got this tattoo in the same spot. Anything. Are you talking about my finger? Yeah. My sister? Well, it's actually really not matching at all. I have it on my pinky. She is on her middle finger. Oh, I thought she had it on the same finger. But that's my sister. I to understand. Me, okay, here's the thing. But we're Ma- dog mothers in law. I would get <laughs> dog mothers in law slash married <laughs> slash best friends. I would get a what day is it like friendship tattoo with you. But okay, here's my thing. So you don't love Sarah? No, I do. <laughs> love her love her love shaughnessy but i've never met elena not saying i I know i would absolutely love her just by like seeing stories and stuff but like would you want to get a tattoo with someone that you don't know no i i get that for me it's like someone who i don't know could get this like some of sarah's friends could get this i just like the whole concept and meaning behind it to i think me and sarah specifically was that like friendship isn't inclusive and that it literally can evolve isn't inclusive is inclusive no isn't inclusive or isn't yeah <laughs> whoa no yeah yeah is jackie just corrected you bailey did. um psa jackie <laughs> just corrected <laughs> bailey on her english i'm evolving <laughs> mic drop but anyways the meaning is it is inclusive okay, like- and it can extend beyond just like certain people like that whole trip to me symbolized all my friends coming together from all different areas so it was just special knowing that like it can grow like if we made a new friend down the road like I just yeah that was where it came from for me I totally understand that might not be what it means to everybody and like it is weird to get a matching tattoo and it's something that's on your body forever I just uh, yellow I, th- I think for sure <laughs> if I was there then it would have been a yeah like it definitely had more of a meaning doing it on that trip like i don't think i would have wanted to come home and like we separately got the tattoos you know what i mean no definitely not but yeah no it's cool so now i have a ship on me (laughs) a friendship which is so cute love that (laughs) and it honestly it also like to me made sense because we call our friendships friendships yeah i know like it was kind of double meaning for me i do want to do like a what day is it tattoo but obviously not just on your forehead what day (laughs) is (laughs) it Cute let's get psycho. let's get dysfunction down our spines oh my god could you imagine <laughs> cute but psycho in handwriting ew on our ass cheeks <laughs> <laughs> jordan would love that don't tell him <laughs> oh god. he would be so happy um okay so that was my cute and then oh, i have so many psychos pick the best one so i feel like I, i'm gonna give one just because it's classic classic what day is it um but I'm going to probably stem. You're going to hear more psychos throughout the coming episodes, friends, because they're just super funny. But so this didn't even happen in Nashville. This happened in Vancouver, Canada at Jackie and I's favorite place in the whole wide world. YVR. Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said Hugo. <laughs> I thought you were being serious, but no. there is heavy sarcasm. YVR. There. So I flew home by myself from Nashville because I ended up staying a little bit later and again i like to travel looking homeless wearing no makeup i was in sweatpants and a white t-shirt and jackie's leopard bomber because i borrowed it for the trip and a hat and my hair is like so greasy and unwashed so i go through um customs and i have nexus and i get through that totally fine they don't ask me any questions and then i'm just walking because i'm trying to find out which carousel and all of them say fucking hong kong so i'm like where like i literally couldn't find what carousel it was so i looked like confused idiot and then it was where our bags came out like it was way over in that far corner in the, in the little doll in the little like the little stupid, tiny corner that's where they spit out the, <laughs> the rejected the hookers, luggage the hookers, <laughs> hookers luggage, luggage. <laughs> with missing <laughs> limbs um so yeah so i'm walking trying to find it and this um border patrol guy comes up to me and he's like can I ask you some questions and I'm like okay and he's like where are you coming in from I was like Nashville and he's like why were you there I was like it was a girls trip he's like how long were you there for I'm like since Thursday he's like um where all he's like are you traveling alone I'm like yeah I, I ended up staying a couple extra days the most of the girls came back on Monday 
and he's like why did you stay longer red flag well no i know but i'm not gonna lie to them because they could check my flight of course I'm like, oh, because I have I have friends who live there and I wanted to stay a couple extra days to spend time with them. He's like, who paid for your trip? Like literally asking me all the same questions that we had when we missed our flight. I'm like, it's this fucking bomber. I'm like, I love this bomber, <laughs> but culprit. I will never wear leopard again I just, on a plane. <laughs> I just love that it's the freaking bomber. Like it has to be. I don't know. Or that I am like a girl traveling alone. But literally I looked like rough. I think it's because you were traveling alone and you were looking lost. So they're probably like, "Wow, she looks like she just came back from a weekend bender with her." Also, sugar daddy. I don't think my bag helps. What my is duffel it? bag, my Louis? Oh, because they look at that and they just think someone bought it for me. And you're like, "It's fake." <laughs> <laughs> hey, the verdict. Ne- also, this is an update. The verdict never came out. So I talked to Courtney from mine. Oh, yours. oh yeah. If you guys listened to that episode, I thrifted this um, Louis Vuitton like duffel, and she was going to see if it was real or not. Cause it looked like I've tried to ask anybody I know. And they were saying that it looks really real. It does. But we never, like, I'm not going to walk into a Louis Vuitton store and be like, can you tell me if my fake's real? No. So she, not. she looked at it and she couldn't come up with an answer on the spot. And she thought she would have been able to. So she had a friend who used to work for Louis Vuitton and sent him photos and he was looking at it and he was like, it honestly, like everything lines up, like the stamps, the dates, the time, the condition, like all of that. He's like, there was just one little thing inside of the seam that looked a little off. He's like, but that could just be from wear and tear or a flaw. Like some yeah. flaws happen. But, um, I mean, I wouldn't say like, I don't think a high end brand like that's going to have a lot of flaws. I think it but just, like, what if it's a one in a million? Let's it just, totally could I'm been. Just basing so she the- was like, I, she's like, it's real and it's, if it's real it just has like some wear from it that like brought up this really random stitching on the inside of the bag and it the to explain it it's like there's the piping and then the stitching inside of the bag it's like the fabric is kind of cut so it looks a little um unfinished but she's like it's either real and that's just random and worn or it's the best fake anybody's ever seen we're just gonna go with it's real yeah but um, and joke about it being fake so anyways i kept getting questioned and he was like who paid for your trip like who paid for the airbnb i'm like i did and then the girls paid me back he's like how did they pay you back i'm like through e-transfer like asking me all these questions and i was like wait a minute this is canadian border services i was like this isn't even the u.s <laughs> like, what is with us i'm scared to travel now i know so you really probably didn't think that was going to happen. The the kicker is, though, is we weren't wearing leopard the last time we went because I would have understood if we got stopped. Yeah, we were both wearing denim jackets. But hoodies. we did get called hookers when we were in Saskatchewan, if you remember, from that yeah. leopard jacket. So, so next geez. time I'm going to travel looking very well put together like I think, a businesswoman. I think maybe Not like a the haggard case. hooker who like carries party, their Louis. Partied too hard in a bathroom with drugs and alcohol no which yeah. i've never done we're so. gonna need to wear well here's the thing what would we wear i'm you know like, i'm gonna go buy a power suit <laughs> and i'm gonna buy a briefcase and i'm gonna look like a woman who's earned her money <laughs> not on her back <laughs> <laughs> i'm dead <laughs> honestly next time if that happens to me my mom's gonna listen to this and be like you will not do that jacqueline rye i'm just gonna <laughs> joke with the the border security don't you dare <laughs> i'm never traveling with you again it'll be funny they don't have senses of humor like imagine okay if you don't have a, like say since you were coming home and you were already in vancouver and you were just gonna like leave imagine he was like how'd you book your flight and you're like my sugar daddy nope <laughs> it'd be no. so funny Mm-mm. only if- i'd be like i don't know her <laughs> and i would be like yes she does look at all these photos I'd be like she's together. my sugar daddy <laughs> I think, though, it is definitely the combination of the Louis bag with the sweatpants and then the extension of the trip that looks so You're going to say my hair extensions? I was like, I wasn't wearing that. No, just an <laughs> extension of, I must have been someone who had quick access to Also, cash. like, I think when you say you're traveling on a girl's trip and you're coming home alone, like, it is definitely a red flag. Yeah, it's so, so weird, though, he got that vibe just by looking at you looking for your suitcase. I don't know. Did you tell, tell him it happened to you last time? Mm-mm. No, that's smart. Totally separate borders, too, so... I don't know. Super weird, but you're welcome, friends. It's classic update in the life of us traveling, but just me. Yeah. I haven't been on a plane in a minute, and I'm sad. Yeah, you're the next... No, I'm the next one getting on a plane again. God. Yeah. Bailey's leaving me again. I know. I'm going to Australia next time. This time I actually wasn't invited. 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Savage. It's not my trip. No, I and I know that totally. I couldn't even afford an Australian flight if I wanted, even if I oh. sold my leopard jacket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so different customs though. Hopefully, it'll go better. You do have to have a visa there. So, do I'm, you have your visa? No, I'm I'm applying for it like this week. It takes like ten minutes to get. Like you oh, get okay. it automatically. Okay. Um, but it's just like totally different laws and things to get in there. So that's so weird that you need a visa to go for just two weeks. It's like an entry thing. I don't know, but they yeah they have a lot of different. They're more strict. Hmm. Their customs. So in well, other interesting. news, do you have any other funny stories from Nash that you can share? Well, um, shout out to Taylor Carter Hilton, who's one of my friends and probably the biggest MVP of the trip. So she looked like I could get down with her. Have drinking. you never met Taylor? I have, but we've never drank. Together. Oh, you guys would have so much fun. She's a pusher. And like also just like she just rallies like she just commits. But so Me. the girls we're leaving um, Monday morning. Their flight was at 7 a.m. So they had gone out the night before because it was Super Bowl Sunday. It was McKenna's birthday. They were just like living up their best life on Broadway Street, which if you haven't been to Nashville is like the street to like go and drink and listen to live music and go to bars at. So they I had gone to bed early because I wasn't feeling super great that day. And they, I think, stumbled in at like two in the morning respect hadn't packed they're like it, i'm literally saying like when it this airbnb looked like a tornado went through it it looked like a tornado plus there was about four to five girls staying in each room so imagine trying to figure out whose fucking clothes are where i saw photos of what your guys's suitcases looked like in that house and i i was shocked <laughs> me the queen of mess was shocked yeah it was bad So they had to pack when they got back at like two in the morning. I don't think anybody slept maybe like an hour, two hours max. Um, So I can obviously like hear them and it's fine. I've just got my headphones on and I'm like sleeping, listening to a podcast and I'm not thinking anything of it. Like they're taking their suitcases down the stairs and it's loud because it's wood. Um, And the bedroom that I'm in is literally right across from the stairs. So like you can hear everything. Um, And then all of a sudden I just, I heard crying and I was like, this isn't normal. I was like, something's happening. I was like, I'm going to give it a minute. And it just like, I couldn't tell if it was laughter or crying. So I got up and it's, this is like five in the morning, like just before five in the morning. And I look down the stairs and all I see is all the girls are at the bottom of the stairs and Taylor is like literally like you know when you see a crime scene how the body sketches are drawn out like the, yeah, the white like outlines their legs going yeah one like way one leg like straight yeah. one's kind of and like the arms are all she's just laying like that on the floor dead and i'm like uh crying just, uh, like laughing crying I, can't, I still can't tell at this point and i'm just like what's happening and all i see is everybody's just staring at her and elena is down there she had been sleeping on the couch and just woke up and she's like looks like she saw a ghost and it took a couple minutes for someone to get the words out that she had taken two to three steps down these stairs with her suitcase like a a big suitcase in hand and the suitcase ended up taking her down the stairs like tumbling over each other like girl is lucky she did not break a bone she was still hammered from being out so she was nice and loose yeah and less prone to injury but could you imagine to have breaking i think if i broke something right before a flight in the states back to canada <laughs> yeah. i think i would just like deal with the injury i'm also guessing that taylor didn't have like travel insurance probably not and it's it does did you know that travel insurance doesn't work if you're drunk no <laughs> yeah so you bought travel insurance before you went yeah okay so your travel insurance is only in effect if you're sober what and the fuck is the point of that? So if, I plan on being drunk 90% of the time I'm I on know. a trip. So if you are drunk and you, well, I'm sure it's only with some insurance companies, but when I was in Vegas and my two girlfriends bought insurance, the person who sold us them literally said, if you are drunk and you hurt yourself. Because they never go to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> sober up and before you go, because you won't be treated or you won't be covered. That's if you're smart. You just wait till you're sober and yeah. then you go to the hospital. Or if, what if you're dying? You're like, wait. Well, <laughs> 
I just got I just got a sober up. <laughs> you call like uh, one of those IV drips. Get that real quick to. F- I need to speed so- up the process. <laughs> <laughs> like your spleen erupts or what is it called? Your appendix. Yeah, appendix. appendix. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we are on one we're good, today. We're good. Um, yeah. So Taylor, that happened. What else? Um, I've got a couple psychos I'm gonna save just because they're funny, but. There were lots of moments. It was just good. Like the Friday night, we had a girls' night and Smash and Tess um, gave all the girls rompers. So we just hung out in those and like played games. Super fun. Um, Elizabeth came, who's the trumpet girl, also the Botox girl. Yeah, she was on our podcast. She was like one of our first guests one ever. Of our OGs. Yeah, I think episode three. Um, so she was there. So fun. I love her so much. And she just opened her own skincare studio, which is so fucking cute. It's called Indie, um, I N D I E, but she did all the design herself and I was blown away. It looks really like clean, modern with a sprinkle of like greenery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like a little bit of like a natural vibe to it, but it definitely looks like a professional designer did it and she did it all herself. So I was blown away. It's a dream. I've yeah. actually been having these. Well, I think I've kind of told you, but I've been having these, this feeling. And this is why I really needed Natasha today because I am having this. I don't know what the correct term is. Your face is, you're trying to figure like, it out. Like spiritually having a feeling or no. like anxiety having a feeling mm. or like your bowels are having I a feeling. I think that I just realized I'm 23 and like. Ah, you're having a quarter life crisis. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Welcome. I've been there. I've survived. So what happened was my sister texted me after we did this Valentine's Day shoot for Bloom. We did a little um, like questionnaire to help with their social and just so they could get some background information. And one of the questions said, how long have you known your best friend? And so my sister texted me being like, oh my God, are you 23? Are you turning 24 this year? And I was like, yeah. And Every so, time that you think that, just remember you're not turning 30. Yeah, I know. But like. <laughs> no, I know. It's like it, it early is Early 20s is such a weird stage in life. And 23 isn't exactly like my early 20s yet and everyone keeps asking me like what am i doing with my life and 20s are hard because like especially now looking back at like this is my last year in my 20s i feel like the beginning of your 20s you have no fucking idea who you are but you think you do and you're having so much fun and like that's how your 20s should be and then when you start to get to 25 you get a little bit more serious because you're like, holy shit, I'm 25. Like I'm not in my early twenties anymore. And then I have to say, like, I really found myself and every person I talk to who's been through their twenties says this from 27 to 28. Like I really came into who I was. I took chances. Like I just kind of really figured out where I wanted my life to be. And I don't think I have it all figured out at all. Like I still have a lot of panic moments and like, is this what I want to do? Or like, Mm -hmm like in 10 years from now you know what I mean but I think that just enjoy it like don't stress yourself out over it yes it's good to be smart and yes it's good to think ahead but like also I still get asked all the time like by family like when I'm am I gonna bring a guy home or like something like that you (laughs) know like there's always something your family or like people are gonna bug you about I guess it's kind of like how we talk about balance and there's never balance like there's never you're never really feeling completely full in life no like you're doing never. everything right and I think that was my biggest thing in 27 like 28 is I because I'm such a perfectionist and I'm like I want to do this I want to make sure that this is that and like I was never feeling fulfilled because I always put that expectation on myself but the second that I let that go or like realize that there is no perfect or that there is like I hate the word balance and that happened at 27 because I realized there's no such thing we put so much pressure on ourselves to have balance when we let go of that we actually achieve more balance. So if you can wrap your head around that and like actually let it sink in, you kind of start to feel more at ease because you just know that like there's always going to be something and accepting that kind of is calming in a way. No, totally. I feel that. I just don't like, like for me, and this is why I was so excited to talk to Natasha today about accounting, which we'll dive deeper into that when we do get together with her. But like, saving for a car saving Mm -hmm. for a house obviously in any right person's mind saving for a house over a car is way uh is smarter but like 
is saving for a house even attainable in my life right now? Should I just save for a car for now and then worry about my house later? I know it's hard. Honestly, I like if I had not gotten into the market literally the week I did, not the month, the week, I would not have been able to afford a house because the market spiked and it, it's come down a bit, but it's still crazier than it was. It's insane. And it's so hard like to even fathom that. But there like there are ways in that this is why I'm glad we're gonna do this podcast because there's things I never knew buying a like as a first home buyer, like there's different things you can do and there's different ways you can save and like with your taxes. So friendships, if you haven't already submitted questions, we want to ask all yours. So make sure that you do, you can DM our podcast page or go into the Facebook group. We'll create a thread. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be, I did create a thread. Perfect. So you can comment on that. Um, but yeah, that took a deep turn. I know. Right. (laughs) But like, I've just been having this weird, like I feel like my life is taking me in so many different directions and I'm like, okay, do I want to like redecorate my place? Do I want to move? Do I want to buy a car? Do I want to save for a house? Do I want to save for traveling? I'm still young. Should I be traveling still and wasting all my money on traveling or should I be saving for my future? Oh, I don't know. Like I I literally wish that someone just had all the answers and I know I have them. It just really sucks and I hate it going through the motion. So friendships, if you're feeling like that lately, just know that you're not alone and your girl is dealing with that here too. No, I feel that. And I think it is hard because you have to also remember like, I think money mindset is a whole other podcast we could do, but it's something that I really learned to be more conscious of because I used to be so stressed about money And so, um, not like stingy because I would online shop and I would do things, but I had so much anxiety around money. Oh, I do a hundred percent. We should really have someone on to talk about it. Yeah. And actually shocker girl really helped me with this. So maybe we can have her back on. But the second you start to see a hundred dollars as like a dollar. And when she first told me this, I could not wrap my head around it because I was like a hundred dollars. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I was like, I could do so much with that. I'm like, that's a phone bill. That's a blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But once I started to kind of let go of that, I really saw a shift in the way that I saw money and how it it opened me up to more money. Um, so it's, it's weird. Like it, it is a bigger conversation. I can't really explain it the same way she did. So maybe that's a whole other podcast we can do because I do think it's an important conversation. And I actually just had this conversation with Caitlin on the, well, when I was in Nashville, because I just, I, I've been there and I see so many people there where they literally like stress over $40 and they're creating this like negative energy around money. So that even when a hundred dollars comes in, they're not even accepting it into their life in like the way where it can create more for them. They're mm-hmm. just seeing it as a burden. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in that, friends, let us know. Well, I'm interested. So <laughs> I honestly have such bad money spending anxiety. I It honestly depends, though, as well on if I have a certain balance in my bank account and then mm-hmm. I get a little more like loosey-goosey with it and spend more here and on myself more there. But it's so hard not having a consistent income making tips as well. And I just... I, I don't know. I think that's really played a part in me growing up as well because I was so careless with my money up until now. But now I'm I like mean, we all were when we're kids and didn't have fucking rent or mortgage to pay or like a phone bill. When but I think back. Oh, how good we had it to no rent and like no bills and how much money I was blowing. Just live at home mind. as long as you can. Friendships be 40 and have your mom do your laundry and live at home. My mom is going to be kicking herself laughing right now being (laughs) like i knew you would say that one day but like then again i'm still so happy i moved out and i built like this little life i have with jordan it's so nice as well so bittersweet yes um okay do we have a shower thought i do oh wait i think it's my week Uh, didn't you just do the um the birthday one no you we are literally so funny because we just we should talk about these things we, before we really but honestly, should but you did the birthday you know, one you, yours is probably better than mine so you know but i proving a point but the we, last shower thought we had was the birthday one well we did the new year's eve birthday no it wasn't yes it was it's okay no i'm gonna win a battle here friends <laughs> i would like to issue a formal statement that i'm wrong <laughs> <laughs> it was the dog voices <laughs> we just yeah we just went through some serious receipts and we both were trying to prove a point some serious receipts but i knew because i always listen i was doing the links um a little later because i was sick last week so i knew that it was you but 
honestly yours is probably way better than mine so just take the cake and do it no 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 i'll save but, mine okay can we do two then no just do one i'll save mine i've got a note i've got, I've got you, a it's bunch. not that good you're literally gonna be like you should oh, fine i'll go and then you can have yours next okay. week uh, now you're gonna be like watch yours sucks <laughs> okay do you ever wonder how many strangers you have seen on the last day of their life ew i don't like that but it, you have for sure you have seen someone on the last day of their life i often think about this as well is and this is probably just my anxiety but i'll be laying down or trying to sleep or just thinking having a thought to myself and, and you're I'm like, like someone's dying right now. yes <laughs> yeah how I've many people before. are dying right now yeah how many people and like there's got to be someone dying from this right now and but at the same time you could be car. like how many people are being born right now and like flip it right to like save your yeah, mind but i've done that too. yeah but it, it is weird to know that you physically interacted with somebody in your day and it was their last day of their life do you think so 100 percent. not every day not every day yeah okay. but at some point in your life you have interacted with somebody whether it was a bump on the shoulder or you've been in the same restaurant as them and it was the last day of their life because I was going to say, sometimes you don't leave your house, so there's no <laughs> chance. No, not definitely not every day. Um, but yeah, yeah. I don't like that. It's I don't either, sad. but it's weird when you think about it. Okay, now my shower thought is a lot. <laughs> On a lighter note. No, here. you're doing yours next week. Oh, I thought you week. said you would do yours. No, I said you can do yours next week. Oh, okay. Well, honestly, it was one from a friendship. Oh, I saw that. I know exactly which one you're going to say. Save it for next week because okay. I do like it. Okay. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, oh, and okay, one other thing I was going to talk about. I don't know if you, I don't think you would have, but I, when I was um, flying home from Nash, I watched the Taylor Swift documentary. Oh, yeah, I've heard um, it's Miss so good. It blew me away. I literally, so I have liked Taylor Swift for a while. Um, I liked her older music and like when I was younger and then it just kind of became, I just got a little too annoyed with the perfectionism, if I'm being honest. And her music kind of just lost it for me a uh -huh, little bit i yeah. got a little too pop um, um just so you friendships know i'm a diehard old t-swift fan even though i don't like country we music. blast out to old all the time yeah and so when one of the days a couple of the girls weren't feeling really good on the trip so they laid in bed and watched the documentary and they are all diehard t-swift fans and they're like it's so good like i got so emotional i'm like okay i'm like sure and I'm like, I don't, I'm not doubting it's good, but I'm just like, I don't think I would get emotional because like they're so invested in her. They love her. Like they watched it the day it came out. And then I was like needing something to do on the plane because I was super tired and I forgot to charge my laptop. So I downloaded it on my phone and ended up watching it. And I was trying like within the first 10 minutes not to cry. And I had like simultaneously chills all over my entire body. Like she was so raw and real and just like vulnerable, but empowering. And just, it was so interesting to see everything that she's been kind of um, masking because her, she's trying to be everything that everybody thinks they want her to be mm -hmm. and like what the industry has told her. But like you take it back to that moment. She was 17 when Kanye took the mic from her she really talks about like how traumatizing that was for her because she thought everybody on stage was booing her and like the psychological um kind of effect it had and how it like well, well stop ruining it no for no, the no no and how it i'm just saying like um created this like domino effect for all the things that came for her future interesting i is it on the american netflix only no it's on canadian but um it's called miss like miss americana because there's a reputation one out but um which was older and she gets into like politics she swears like she's just like totally candid in it and it's so so good yeah i definitely had my reservations about her after the whole kanye thing because i'm such a kanye fan as well and i don't think at all that he did what he did was right but then when he used her and does she talk about when yeah he she used does her? So it's so it's it's really interesting. She goes into a lot of different things. Story. So I'm interested. And to I hear didn't what she know says. either that she literally physically was not seen for a year. Like she went into hiding for like a year. Where? She just I don't know where she went. She didn't say, but she um she thought that's what people wanted because she was getting a lot of bad press and stuff. So she like wouldn't go. She like I guess had a property somewhere like hidden. And there, but there was never any paparazzi photos of her, never any appearances, no award shows, like nothing, no concert. Well, she did go incognito on social media. I remember that. Yeah. So it was like, I don't know, but 
I honestly, if you have reservations about it because you're not like a diehard T-Swift fan, I still think there's something so valuable in it that anybody can take away. And all I wanted to do afterwards was listen to old T-Swift. Oh, I love old T-Swift. It yeah. gives me so many feels. Ugh, I could, re- I literally, me and Bailey can sing every lyric to every old Taylor Swift song. Okay, what song should we go out on? No. Our song is a slam screen door, sneaking out late, tapping on your window. When you're on the phone and he talks real slow, cause it's late and your mama don't know. Our song is where he <laughs> lied. The first date, man, I didn't kiss him and I should have. And when I got home, for I said amen, asking God if he can play it again. Uh-oh. And the friendships are like, never do that again. <laughs> Honestly, as we were doing that, I just remembered we didn't do our shower thought song, but that's okay. Oh, no. How dare we? Um, I We're not going back because it's not relevant now. We're fired. <laughs> okay friends thank you for listening to just us this week um we'll be back with something much more educational next week (laughs) yeah honestly friendships just dysfunctional at its finest but you guys always ask for these episodes so hopefully there's some piece (laughs) of valuable information in there and if not go watch the americana documentary so you get some value (laughs) in your life okay we love you thank you for listening you know the drill subscribe leave us a review rate us five stars and join our facebook group and last but not least, congratulations to our winners of the giveaway. They, yes. I'm so excited for them. If you missed it, sorry, sucks to suck. <laughs> they got <laughs> We announced. will have more giveaways, not that big because that was our one year, but um, we want to start doing like more consistent giveaways in our Facebook group. So. I think that we really shot ourselves in the foot for our second birthday. Yep. Because what are we well we do? got we got a year to think on it we so got let's, a year let's get to, cracking. to get a bunch of new guests who hopefully want to contribute <laughs> all friends have a good one bye